after Petrianal has been now two decades old. And it all started with our interest to understand how different forms of vitamin E work. And at the very outset, we received samples from Germany, a company in Germany, pure samples of alpha, beta, gamma, delta, tocopherol, and alpha, beta, gamma, delta, tocotrienol, and did a comparative study of how they match. In those studies, 20 years ago, we saw something that was extraordinary, and this was not motivated by, you know, work with Malaysia. I used to come to Malaysia to listen to, but when this study was, showed us that the efficacy of tocotrienol in protecting neurons from a large number of toxins is so far superior than what tocopherol provides. That grabbed our interest. And as we took the bench studies from the laboratory to impact, we needed a source for tocotrienol that would be very well characterized and eventually if you had to go to a clinical trial, even the manufacturing of that will have to be compliant with the FDA process. So with that in mind, we partnered with Hovin and primarily to get material that are consistent because otherwise scientific research cannot be done. It's just not that every so many years the composition is changing. So the quality of manufacturing also has a very important role. So this partnership obviously has taken us, us from rodents through canine, you know, now to humans. And like I said in my talk, research needs to be rigorous and research needs to be responsible. Rigorous research is slow, but once you do it with rigor, it becomes a reference line for the rest of the world. So in 2000, we published the first paper reporting that palm tocotrienols are extraordinarily neuroprotective. Today, there are well over 100 studies that have been cited over 3,000 times in the literature and it has developed into its own field. So what we would like to do is to make sure that in a responsible manner, we completed our phase one, we completed our phase two. Now the issue with phase two is that when you're attempting to go to a diseased population, especially imagine somebody, God forbid, in your family gets a mini stroke. Uh, everybody is you know, taken by surprise. It's a state of shock. And according to current data, there's a 25% chance that you would have a significant cardiovascular disease within the next year. And there is roughly a 10% chance that you would have a major stroke within the next year. So that's a very big deal. So you have to be, you cannot interfere with the standard of care as you try to find out what palm tocotrienol does. So you have to make sure that they get the appropriate standard of care. And in addition to that, then you can add the palm tocotrienol factor in a very responsible way where you're certain that it is not harming the patient. So on one hand, of course, I understand the interest of the press, the interest of the sponsor, the interest of the community to see a solution. But as scientists, my first responsibility is not to hurt. And then to see if it helps. I think now we have crossed a very important bridge in that we have proven that with patients that just got stroke and are in the process of standard of care, if they do take another capsule, in this case of tocotrienol supplement, that it does not adversely affect them, okay? This opens the big doors to final showtime, which no palm tocotrienol study has ever gone. These are the types of studies that will draw a line that decades from now will be cited and will pave the way to a new discipline and a new, you know, it will feed new policies it will lead to other studies. I'm so happy to see some of what we did in the U.S. has already been you know, successfully uh, recapitulated in Malaysia. Uh, you saw the work that was presented yesterday by Dr. Sundram. Um, so where it has been now reported from Malaysia that the 
you know, lesion in the brain uh, of aging uh, folks uh, have sort of gone down with tocotrienol supplementation, very consistent with what we have been showing. And if the science is true, it will keep on showing. There is no uh, magic that the scientist does. The only magic that the scientist can do is rigorous science, not biased, not get carried away what the expectations of the people are. And my commitment to this subject is demonstrated by my attachment to this topic for the last 20 years. And this has become a key part of my career. And mind you, very important, there is no other scientist in the world or in the US today that is, has been continuously funded in the last two decades or so by the National Institutes of Health on tocotrienol. Tocotrienol, there was no funding from the US government. You know, we were the first to get it and we held it until now we have active funding. Meaning that not only, of course here you have the converted, but in the US you have people that are critical, that are skeptic, and they're right in their own. So through rigorous science, we have to be able to change their minds.